Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform, please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a 2020 update of a model launched in 2019. This is Audemars Piguet Code 1159 self-winding, 41 millimeters in a combination of white gold and rose gold. This watch features the lacquered gradient dial that debuted in 2020 to create a more commensurately upscale look so that the dial matched the grandeur and nuance of the case. So, the watch is 41 millimeters in diameter, which is large for a dress watch, by 10.8 millimeters thick, which is actually thinner than it looks, but a broad 49.7 millimeters across the wrist, again, large for a dress watch, with a sporty and commanding 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs, so it has a impressive sports watch-like stance on the wrist. Now, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see that the watch is, in fact, low enough to fit underneath the cuff, but it's broad. So, it's getting close to the edge of my wrist. I think 15 centimeters circumference is going to be the smallest wrist that can wear this watch. Taking a quick look at the hardware, you can see that hardware and software both impressive. The buckle is custom made for this model. It features a polished hexagonal bolt and a bar fixing it to the strap. We have a combination of satin finish and polished highlights for good attention and detail. Now you'll like that security, a strap that is held to the buckle with a screw and a bar. It's assembled the same way at the case, where the strap is held to the case using a polished hexagonal screw and a bar. More secure than a spring bar, I like to see that. The strap, which is a brand new Audemars Piguet factory strap, is small round scale alligator on the bottom, large rectangular scale matte gray alligator leather on the top. It has a little bit of bolstering for thickness, a folded edge, and a monotone stitch. The reason for gator on both sides, as you'll see on Chopard, Louis Uly Chopard models, F. Pigeon, Debatoun, and many other in haute horlogerie, it is a more durable, more expensive, and longer lasting strap. Now, the Royal Oak really is the patron saint of this watch because there are quite a few references. That hexagonal bolt, that's a nod to the crown as well as the bezel bolts of the Royal Oak. And if you look at the mid case here, you can see that it is a rounded octagon, just like the bezel of the Royal Oak. You'll also note this watch is a medley of rose gold and white gold, but Audemars Piguet white gold is blindingly snow white. And that's because AP uses some platinum family coating, I'm not sure which one, but probably rhodium, to create a much whiter white than you get with standard 18 karat white gold alloys. So you get a truly dramatic contrast between the warmth of the rose gold and the white of the white gold. You'll also note that this watch is full of nuance. Uh, you can see that the bezel has a little bit of a bevel polishing on its edge. You'll note that we have the same degree of subtle beveling on the underside of the bezel and on the top side of the case back. The case back has a beveling on its flank on the underside. The lugs are open, airy, and evacuated. You can see they've been satinated internally, probably with some sort of a Dremel-based tool. They have a little beveling on their inner face, and you can see the same is true on this side. We have an inner bevel, we have an outer micro bevel, and then we have a bevel on the top and the bottom of the mid case with satin finished mid flank. You can also see that the bezel itself dips down at the lugs, and so the rose gold mid case thins out. So there's a lot of nuance in shape and detail going on here. You can also see that the mid case is somewhat recessed from the case back and the bezel edge, creating a depth effect. Now, the crystal, difficult to explain, but you can see that the reflections and refractions are not conventional. And that's because there is a little curvature of the crystal and a little dip of it from side to side. The crown is satinated outboard and then the remainder of it is satin and polish. And the dial, a big upgrade from the original Code 1159. Once more, when it came out in 2019, the self-winding and the chrono were said to look, quote, cheap. It wasn't because the cases looked cheap. They were always superb, and AP makes its own cases. But it was the dial that came up short. Because they were just one monotonous color in lacquer, they looked, well, less expensive than they were to make. But the Bolshoi Theater limited edition that came out with a gradient enamel dial that year pointed the way to the future. And so for 2020, we got this gradient lacquer dials on the code 1159. So this one is sort of silver gray at the center, fading to black at the edge. We have 
applique quarter Arabic numerals. And notice the attention to detail. The font used for these applique numerals, for the chapter ring, against which you can read minutes and seconds, and for the date disk, it is the same font on all three sets of numerals. Now, the watch has a lovely rounded applique baton-style hour indices, and we have rounded baton-style hands, too. Uh, the level of three dimensions that is uh, self-evident when you look at these components, it's worthy of a high-end independent that makes its hands manually. Again, the vaulted top to bottom, the height of that rolled hand profile and index profile looks like something handmade. We also have an applique Audemars Piguet logo. The watch has a hacking seconds function, so you can stop the movement. There's also a quick set, so you can rapidly reset the date. You see all the different numerals used in that unique custom-made font. Flip the watch over, we have a new movement. This movement is larger than the previous caliber 3120. That was 26.6 millimeters. This, caliber 4302, is 32 millimeters in diameter. It is a 70-hour power reserve rather than the previous 60. It pivots on 32 joules. It beats away at 28,000. 800 vibrations per hour rather than the previous 21,600 vibrations per hour. It still has a full balance bridge and a free sprung gyromax style balance for toughness and shock tolerance. The movement has ceramic rotor bearings for higher winding efficiency, and you can see that it features the coats of arms of Audemars and Piguet, reminding you that AP is the oldest Swiss watchmaker still owned and run by the founding families. There's a nice feature on this rotor that I appreciate more than any other finishing flourish on the movement, and it's these eight sharp interior angles. Those are not easy to accomplish, and while you won't find the like on the bridges, you will find it on the rotor, which, again, just feels like the icing on an already very rich cake. Most of the remaining finish elements, the engine turning on the base plate, the stripes, the black polishing of screws, and the beveling, that's all done by machine, but the rotor, that looks like it was handcrafted. The watch is 30 meters water resistant, so if you want a highly water resistant Audemars Piguet, get a Royal Oak Offshore. For all other occasions, there's the code 1159. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.